folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. I have a card to share with you today. It is one that I had done not too long ago for the Butterfly Reflections Inc. blog. I hadn't had the chance to edit the video before I needed to get my post done, so I thought that I would share that with you here today. I am going to be focusing on several of my favorite things, stamp sets. This one is the Otterly Love You. I just think these otters are just totally adorable. And then I'm also going to be using the My Favorite Things Mermazing stamp set. I have done a card with this in the past, and I will be sure to be sure to share that in a link down below as well as over on my blog. And then I thought initially when I started planning this card that I would use a couple of these small images from the All Heart stamp set. I ended up changing my mind on that, but this is totally another set that is worth checking out, and I suggest that you do so. All right, so to make my card, I am going to be using my Misty stamping tool. This is the original Misty. I have my Nina Solar White cardstock cut down to five by five inches. I thought that a square card would be super fabulous to go along with this little scene. And I'm just placing that there in my Misty and making sure that it's secure in the corner because I don't want it to uh, move around on me. And then I also have all of the stamps that I'm going to use loaded up here on my acrylic block and I keep those on my workspace next to me so they're nice and handy. And then I will also be using my favorite things, Black Licorice Hybrid Ink. This is one of my favorite Copic friendly inks. And I'm just getting my images placed on there. I'm, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I really don't have a plan. And that's part of the appeal to this particular scene because nothing has to be perfect. So I thought I would have put that bigger rock or those two larger rocks on there rather. And then I changed my mind. And so I'm just putting the smaller one there instead. Now, the only thing I'm trying to keep in mind as I lay this out is that I do want my lake bed to look like it has some depth to it. So I, I'm going up a little bit higher with these rocks than what you would normally think to because I want to create the illusion that it has depth, which means that these need to go back a little, up a little bit higher and that's fine as long as you keep in mind that you still want to give yourself plenty of room for your water. Plus those otters are going to take up quite a bit of space. Now you definitely don't need to put three otters on this. I wanted to use up as many as I could in the stamp set because they're just too cute not to. And I thought they all worked well together. So I'm just going to continue to ink up my, my rocks, lay them out, ink them up, and just keep building this this part of the scene and I'm focusing on the bottom part here first because that'll help me not only lay out where my otters need to go when I'm done but also then it gives me the idea exactly how much space this needs to take up if that makes sense and here's the other thing I'm not actually going to do a lot of masking on these rocks I don't need to now normally when you stamp your foreground images those get done first and then you you mask as as you go along so you you mask and then you stamp another one on, on top of it so it look like looks like it sets behind it but we're going to do something a little bit different here so i am going to mask out this one and i believe i might mask out the ones there on the edges while i'm at it but I'm kind of working backwards, as you'll see. I'm, I'm spreading them out enough that I don't have to do a whole lot of masking, but I'm working my way forward as I go. And now that they're all done, I'm laying out my otters and that little turtle. He's from Mermazing, and I couldn't, I wasn't going to put him on here, but look at him. He's so cute. Now, you will see that I do kind of make a small mistake when I stamp him because I go to double, double stamp him. And my card panel shifted just enough that you can see that the lines on him are a little bit thicker than what they should be. But we're not going to worry about it because we're not even close to being done. Now, I'm going to go in with my Lawn Fawn acrylic block and I'm just going to hand stamp those fishes. They would take forever to do it with the Misty and it's just totally not necessary. I kind of already know where I want them and how I want them grouped, so this is the, the way to go. Now, I've taken all of my masks and I've masked everything off this panel. By the way, I've used 3M full stick post it notes for my mask. They are super duper handy if you have never seen them in action. 
Um, all you have to do is stamp one image on top, pull off as many sheets as you need, and cut them all out at once. Super handy. Now, this is 3M Post-it labeling tape, and I am going to mask off the my rocks. And I'm I'm starting. I. I I'm starting where some of the rocks are going to look like they go up into our water scene. So while I'm keeping it level, my labeling table level, I'm going down far enough that a couple of those stick up. That's going to help reinforce the idea that we're trying to get some depth. And so it looks like that lake bed stretches out towards the back of our card. The inks that I'm using today are Tim Holtz Distress inks. I have Cracked Pistachio, Broken China, Faded Jeans, and Wilted Violet. You could use any any type of ink that you would like. Uh, my favorite things inks would be great. Uh, the Distress Oxide inks would also be cool. Um, they just, because they're a pigment base, they are semi-opaque. Um, so you wouldn't really get that that almost translucent um, feel that you do in water with those, but they would look really pretty anyway. Now I'm taking my Ranger mini blending tool and I'm going to start with the cracked pistachio and I'm starting here at the top because I need to give myself a little bit of an idea like how far down I want the cracked pistachio to go. I don't want the panel too light. Um, you just want to give it the idea that the light is reflecting at the top through the water and I'm not worrying about it being super smooth because I am going to go over this a couple times. I just need to get it on there and give myself an idea. Now I'm going to flip it around and I'm starting with the wilted violet. I want to give this a little bit of more depth. So I start with that and then I go in with the faded jeans and I add a little bit of that. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We're going to go over it again. Now I'm bringing in that broken china. That broken china is my focus color. That's the color you're going to see the most of when the panel is finished. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Again, I'm going in with more faded jeans. I add a little bit more wilted violet to really give that, um, to up that purple a little bit. Back in with the broken china. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add the rest of that cracked pistachio and start smoothing things out and making sure that all of these colors blend. Now some of my masks are lifting and it's driving me batty, but it's fine. I just keep foraging on. So now I have Distressed Ink and Antique Linen and Gathered Twigs, as well as Ground Espresso. These colors, I'm putting these on here because I need a base color. I am going to be Copic coloring over them later, but I'm gonna save myself some time and some ink by adding these colors first. And it's the same principle that I did with the water above. So I went in with the Antique Linen. Now I have the Vintage, or I'm sorry, the Gathered Twigs. And now I'm adding that little bit of depth with the ground espresso. And you can see that there's a mark on my panel for my blending tool, but that's not a big deal because we're not done blending first off. Second off, I'm gonna be go going over this with Copic coloring. So I'm just giving myself a good solid base to start with because I really don't want to waste my Copic inks. Now the first thing I'm going to start coloring in are these otters and I'm using E21, 23, 25, and 29. All of these otters are going to be colored the same. Uh, technically that otter on the bottom would be a little bit darker because he's closer to the bottom of our water which is darker but I'm not going to worry about that. You could also make these guys look like they have a little bit of texture. Otters typically have a little bit longer hair and you could really play that up in your scene. Again, it's not something that I'm gonna worry about today. Um, this isn't really about technique. This is just mostly about getting these guys colored in and they're so cute, I don't think that they need that much more. Right now, I am just mapping out my shadows and I am being fairly conservative because again, I'm not too worried about technique and I don't want them to be too dark, especially that guy there at the bottom. He is uh, surrounded by wilted violet and faded jeans and those colors are dark by themselves. If we made him too dark, you would have a really hard time seeing him. Now I'm using my E29. This is my darkest shadow color and I am just going back over the lines that I had already done with my E21. 
and I'm also making sure that I don't go all the way to the edge with that E21 because I want I want it to look like there's um, some light reflecting off the bodies of my otters because that's that's what it would look like in the water. There would probably be more at the top than there is at the bottom. But again, I'm not worried about technique. I'm just getting these guys colored in. And honestly, nobody's going to notice the difference anyway. So in case you missed that, I had E21, then I went to E29, then E25, 23, and now I'm back to my E21, and I'm making sure that I'm leaving quite a bit of light space on his face, on his arm, and his little leg there, because I, I want this guy to stand out against all of that darker ink that we have going on in the background. Plus, we're going to be adding uh, quite a few more images around him, so we need to make sure that he's going to stand out. Now, I didn't get a really good blend the first time with the E21, so I went in with the E23 and back again with the E21, and that helped. Now, we're going to color in our little fishies. You could probably do two colors on these guys, and that would be just fine. I got a little bit crazy because I couldn't quite decide what colors I wanted. So I'm I'm ridiculous. Pick two colors and call it a day, folks. It's not necessary to go to this extent. I'm going to color in one of them for you, and then we're going to call it good because it's all the same thing, every one of them. Now let's move on to our turtle and he's also pretty basic. Again, he's small enough. You could probably get away with two colors on him as well. I just, I, I can't help myself. The other thing I would like to note is I had gotten a little bit of that faded jeans on his face when I was doing my ink blending. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to, you'll see here in a moment where I'm going to add a shadow along the front of his head just like that so you're not even going to notice it if you were doing lighter colors you could take a damp very damp or i'm sorry almost dry paper towel and you could you could work that up you could also use like a sand eraser and get that up as well but we don't need to worry about that today now we're working on the rocks and this was extremely time consuming because i decided to use the stippling technique um, because I wanted these rocks to look like they were um, kind of modeled. I wanted them to look like, uh, I don't know, maybe they had algae growing on them. Um, and then maybe the way the light was reflecting off it. I didn't want them to look super smooth. So I just go in and I, I'm i adding dots. And right now I used my lightest color to add um, to map out where my shadows are going to be. And now I'm using my darkest color, which right now is the C5. I do end up bringing in the C7 later, but you get the idea of what I'm doing right now just with the C5. Again, it's just in the shadows and I'm being conservative again because number one, these are fairly small images. And number two, I don't want the ones in the front to be too dark because we're trying to create that illusion that there is actually some depth to our card panel. Now, I've got to be honest, folks. Stippling is a time-consuming technique. It can take forever, and I was out of my mind to do it on this many rocks, but it's, it's worth it. If you keep at it, it is totally worth it. And my other struggle with it is I have to slow down because then I have to decide exactly where, where I'm putting my shadows, how far I want to stretch those out because it's such a different technique. And then I'm speeding this up for you because it's, it's boring, but it gives you the idea of how to achieve this look. And then you just do that on all of the rocks. You, you do that on all of your images. And then you can always go back later and reinforce those some more or add a few shadows, maybe add a, a dot here or there to kind of help finish achieving that look that you're going for with a stippling technique. Now the bonus to this technique is no two images are going to look the same because they are dots and it's impossible to place them all in the same spot. It's all going to look different and it's going to give you that variation and texture that's awesome. 
So now I'm working on my seaweed. I'd already stamped one and then I realized that I wasn't recording. So here's what I'm doing. I'm doing the rock and roll technique. I am using my favorite things, the pigment inks. And I started with my lightest and it just inked up the top of my stamp. And then I went over to my darker color and did the bottom, but I kind of took it up a little bit into that lighter color so they blended well. Now, you'll have to do this a couple times because it wasn't, um, it wasn't bold enough. They started to blend in a little bit into that Distress Ink background, but that's fine. Um, you, can, you can look right through the stamp and just stamp over it again. And we're also going to do something later on when we finish the bottom of our lake here that's going to help reinforce that seaweed. And I started with all of my masks on my images because I do want some of the seaweed to look like it's behind the rock. And then I realized that that was ridiculous because I want some of them in front of the rocks. And it was just taking up to way too much brain power to leave all of those masks on there. So I decided to pull them off and then I will add the mask back on the rocks that I want the seaweed to be behind, if that makes sense. And unfortunately, you can't see all of this. I keep pulling my card panel down towards me so I can really get over the top of that and restamp them. Um, but there, there you go. I added some of the mass back on. Now I'm pulling them back off. So I now I've taken off all of my mass, and this is what we're going to do to finish off the bottom of our little lake here. I'm taking the same colors that I used for the otters because there's really no need to use anything different. And I am going to do the same exact stippling technique that I did on the rocks, but I'm going to do it down here on our lake floor. And I'm starting with the E23, which is my second lightest color. And I'm going to use that to map out where I want my shadows to be because we're not going to use a lot of the E21. We're not going to completely cover up this whole floor in stippling because we don't need to. We already did some of our ink blending and that's perfect. We just need to add a little bit more dimension to it and a little bit of texture. And also by doing this, it helps reinforce again those um, those little seaweeds that are sticking up there. So I'm speeding this up because again, it's stippling, it takes forever. And I'm just going into those, those shadows areas and I'm not stretching them out too far just yet because we still have a little bit of work to do and we can, we'll stretch those shadows out as we go. Now I'm going in with the E29 and I'm focusing just in my shadows. I do, kind of eyeball it and see how far out I want to go. Now I'm bringing in my E25. And, you know, honestly, I probably, I probably could have focused on this a little bit more as I did this card. But I think that once it's all done, nobody's ever going to notice it. And probably only because I pointed it out. Okay, now I'm going to do some heat embossing and I'm using Nuvo Clear Embossing Powder and Versamark ink. And I'm going to use that wave stamp that is in the Otterly Love You stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it hmm, pretty much all over our card panel, including over the top of some of our little images there. In order to make this scene look more cohesive, I am essentially stamping it regardless of what is underneath it. That helps give it the illusion that the otters are a part of the water, not sitting above the water. And then also to help reinforce the illusion that there is more than just those the five by five inches here, I am making sure that I'm stamping some of those waves off the card panel as well. Now my heat gun is plugged in across the room so you won't actually see me heat up the embossing powder but I'm just going to show you where I'm stamping those and then 
I'll add the powder on this. Now, this is the first time that I've used the Nouveau Clear Embossing Powder, and I actually really liked it. I don't use embossing powders very often, and I definitely have favorites when I do, but folks, this Nouveau Clear Embossing Powder is totally worth checking out. Plus, I am super impressed with the amount of powder that comes in these bottles. And Nuvo is well known for making sure that you get quite a bit of product, um, regardless of what you buy from them. And I love it. Totally worth the investment. All right. So I am just sprinkling some of this powder on there. I did treat this with my anti-static powder tool before I dumped the powder on here. And also I would like to note that this ink blending actually had the chance to set overnight before I did any embossing on it. Now, had I just, um, had, had I just done the ink blending and then my coloring and then went straight to embossing, I would have double checked this first to make sure that my ink blending was really dry before I did this. Um, Distress inks, although they dry to the touch fairly quickly, it does take some time to finish absorbing into the paper and dry completely. But I am good to go, so I didn't need to worry about that. So I'm just putting on the first the first set of waves and then I'm going to heat this up and then I'm going to come back in and do it again just to kind of round out those waves a little bit more. I felt like I had too many gaps and I wanted it to to be a little bit more full. Now I'm taking my Distress inks in the same colors that I had used for the ink blending and the solid fish that are in the Mermazing stamp set. And I'm just kind of stamping those around my background. I'm going to use the same colors on each layer that I had done in my ink blending. Um, so it looks like they're, they're setting further back in our lake. Now you could do the rock and roll technique on this as well, and that would look really cool, but I got lazy and honestly, it doesn't matter. So now I'm taking some sparkle shimmer spray and I'm just going to flick this onto my background because I want to help reinforce that they're, they're underwater and it'll kind of give a little bit of a kind of a shiny bubble look. And the only, the only problem is, is right there, you can't always control how much comes out of the end of that sprayer. So sometimes you get these big drops and then I didn't have a paper towel sitting next to me. So I had to get up and get one. And by the time I came back, look how much that spread. But not going to worry about it. We're just going to roll with it because I, I think at the end of the day, it looks just fine. Plus it's shiny and everybody likes shiny things. I did make sure that I amassed off the otters because I didn't want sparkle all over them, but everything else was fair game. Now I'm going back in with a little bit more because I, even though I had that big spot on there, I didn't feel like I had enough of the little tiny drops. So I'm just doing it one more time. Now I'm going to take my Secura Jelly Roll pen. This is the clear glaze. And I'm gonna go over all of the otter's nose and noses or noses, nose, noses. Anyway, all of the otters get this. And then I'm gonna go over the little fishies as well. And I added it to a Nina White cardstock card base that was cut uh, five by ten inches and scored at five inches and that's it we're done this card was actually pretty easy to make it didn't take a whole lot of masking and we saved ourselves a bunch of time doing our ink blending which is always great be sure to subscribe to my channel as well as head over to the Butterfly Reflections Inc. blog for more details and links as always I hope you enjoyed my card today thanks so much for stopping by until next time